Hello, and welcome back to Gimp Move. Welcome back to Sniff Mavericks. Uh, full disclosure, this is our second time trying this because we got <laughs> halfway through the game before Alonzo. I was like, hey, are you recording, Ethan? I checked, and sure enough, I wasn't. He called it. But <laughs> literally, this, this happened is... last time. Ethan was pl playing really good. And then yeah. uh, it does was Castlevania and our summer break way back when. And at least one out of every three Game Mavericks playthroughs, we have to. F <laughs> or we have to sniff up, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, balance is One day, too Pimple and Princess Angelica were out cruising. I'm so excited to play this game for the channel, and now I'm playing it again. I like how um, it's a space car. I know. It's, this game is very stylized and cool. Like, look at look at the detail on that thing. For an 8-bit game, that's really impressive. Um, anybody who's ever played this game before knows just how hard it is. And this game has earned a reputation over the years as being one of the hardest games that has ever been released. Uh, so, I did four practice playthroughs. Before we started, yeah, let's get him back. I got a crane for action. Take us to the rumble, coach. And then there's the dark queen. Not so fast, better jerks. If you even reach me, I'd have to beat Rubber Menace and Big Blood. Still fancy your chances? Come to me now if you dare. Ha! Ha ha! Ha! Okay, there. <laughs> All right, so anybody who's ever played this game knows that this is... This game is cruel with how difficult it is, but I'm going to play it and beat it on the show for you today, so. Yeah. Should I play a Zitz? I can play a Zitz. What the, what what changes? He's yellow instead of green. You know what? Play it's because what Pimples is green, isn't it? <laughs> I'm blue. <laughs> All right, and the music in this game is fantastic, so. Go! Get ready, Toads, down the surface on the turbo cables. Uh, here we go. We're finally playing. I still forgot to change the uh, color palette. Oopsies. Uh, but I'm going to show off all the warp zones in this game, but it's going to be a 100% run. The warp zone. Okay. And the pencils oh, shit, come out of the I ground. Missed it. I, I already missed the first warp zone. It's up there. <laughs> I forgot. Um... You have to beat those first two enemies immediately to get them, but I screwed up. It's the nerves. It's the Let's Play curse getting us the second time around. Don't you know? Yep. Um, what were you saying in our first playthrough, Mikey? Well, I think Alonzo said something to the effect of, Is this game legitimately hard, or is it just designed oh, yeah, like it, shit? It, the design and everything like that is in one of those games where it's just designed poorly, therefore it's hard. So... But then you. This game is designed well. Mm -hmm. This game is designed well, but there's just so many quirks about it that make it really difficult. I'll try to point out as many as I can. Shit. Well, now I'm just in a bad rhythm. I think you mentioned <laughs> like uh, there's a lot of traps for be beginners. Is what a lot of yes it gets. A lot of beginner traps. Like right now, I just lost the. I just lost that stick, and I never, I never finished this level without that stick. Huh. And then, I think it talked about Sorry, I'm playing the, much worse this time around. That's all right. I think we're also talking about like um, I'm trying to remember like uh the the not the history, but oh no yeah, Battletoads there was 2020 a game, and Ethan, as you were talking about, you know you you you're not uh, a fan of the game of the series, but you're this game specifically is what. I love I love this game specifically, oh, but I am <laughs> having a terrible run at the moment. That's why I'm trying to do all the talk here, and so that way you can refocus. <laughs> so that you know it's have... bad when Alonzo is doing all the talking. <laughs> I know, isn't that weird? This is his favorite game. Usually... I want to make sure he's having a good time. If I, I've... No, it's just yeah. usually you're so quiet I... in, the, in the playthroughs. Full disclosure, I like this game more than Road Rash 3. This is my favorite <laughs> NES game of them all. Really, this my... specific one. Yes. Funny thing about this game, uh, you know, well, that level, you never get to see that boss. He really? just sets his foot on screen. That's a... so heck, will you frogs did well, but did they dance against my birds of prey? <laughs> <laughs> it's a vertical drop for about a mile, and there are things moving down there, so you better take care, toads. 
So he, so the messages are different this time around than the first time we played. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. Right. It's different each time. All right, so what I was saying before is uh, I really have to concentrate this level because if you can get those birds, if you can hit them off the wall seven times, you, uh, you can actually get an extra life. So you only start this game with three lives and three continues, but that is not enough <laughs> for, mo for most people. So you have to use whatever you can to get as many lives in this game as you can. So one of those is to take advantage of as many of these as you can. Yeah, it looks like you got one. That's one. Yeah, and you didn't I miss hope, the I other hope life. To get a, you I hope to get at least three or four. Y your score also increases every time you get a hundred thousand points. Right. But that For stops so. if you happen to max out your score. For a second there, I thought your score increases every time you feed him a Chaos Emerald. <laughs> <laughs> I've eaten the last Chaos Emerald. <laughs> if all, I've all finally the eaten all the Fart Emeralds. Yeah, I've sniffed all the Fart Emeralds. <laughs> Alright. I have finally conquered all the Chaos Planets. Play Chaos Planet. <laughs> 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 Alright, so those are, uh... I mean, you can kind of you can kind of see what's going on here. All right, Ethan, around seven minutes fifty, I think there should be another fart sample for you. <laughs> I like Ethan how play Alonso that was a resistant to farting on camera for the longest time. I've given up. And then, I've and then totally I given then. Up. <laughs> and then I managed. I camera. managed to catch. Oh my god, I'm gonna die. I managed to catch a backdoor sample by happenstance, and now he's recorded two for you today. I know, just. <laughs> This be maybe maybe that finally was what did it in for old Alonzo. Damn it! Yeah, the 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 Alonzo fart truthers released a ninety-page <laughs> Google Doc that does not like us. Uh, the the fart jokes. Yeah, awesome <laughs> hat. And asked for He's like, stop. Could I pay a dollar to watch a version of this without the scatological sound effects? Yeah. Sorry, and, pal. That's just who we are. And I had to be like, okay, I'll tone down the poop ones, but not the parts. When we find more stuff to talk about and get better at this, then maybe. <laughs> we're, this whole we're commentary thing that we have dedicated our, our free this time, time to doing. isn't as good because we're playing it the second time. Yeah. Did you guys? Did you guys know that? Yeah. You guys know that um, you earlier you were talking about those heart button. sound effects and how this game is composed by David Wise. Yes. Who did uh, Rare Games. Yes, so he is, he is the composer, be one of the composers behind the three Donkey Kong Country games on the SNES, as well as Diddy Kong Racing on the N64, Star Fox Adventures for the GameCube, and Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, of course, and a whole bunch of other shit no one's played. <clears throat> so this was, yeah, I guess he was like... I'm not sure when they hired Robin Beanland and Evelyn Novakovic, but it seems like a lot of the NES Rare games were composed by David Wise, to my recollection, like Wizards and Warriors. And the If you listen to this game, well, first of all, this game for an 8-bit game has fantastic music and sound effects, uh -huh. as well as outstanding graphics. I, know, um, I, I noticed that Super Mario Bros. 3 drum sample in the title screen theme. Yeah, this game came out slightly after Mario 3, but uh, this game came out like a month before the Super Nintendo came out. Anyway, here is the Turbo Tunnel level. This is the level where almost everybody stops playing the game because yeah. they think it's the hardest thing that's ever existed. But let me tell you, this is the third easiest level in the game. The, the It's unfortunate that you, when you have to phrase it as the third easiest. <laughs> I mean, the only levels that are easier than this one are the first two. Oh yeah, and mm -hmm. I forgot to mention there's also what Ethan says to the uh, to the viewers: uh, get filtered uh, scrubs. Just get good at yeah. the game. Yeah. If you thought Dark Souls was hard, there ain't no campfires in this game. Scrubs. Actually, this game is it, unbelievable. With Dark Souls, it's it's similar in the fact it's that pattern recognition, honestly. But the, the only difference is Dark Souls you can customize how you're gonna go to the challenge. Battletoads is like, hey, you're given this puzzle kind of like a, a rhythm game kind of 
figure out the pattern and memorize it. Yeah. This, this game is so uniquely difficult for so many different reasons. It's filled with beginner traps, and there are not l unlimited continues. Um, sorry, this part's hard. Oh. Now, there, there is a Famicom version of this game that does have unlimited continues, correct? I don't know if it has unlimited continues or not. Um, is this is sorry. I, this I, game I, came I forget, out in ninety one. I forgot who coined this term, but I like it so much that I'm going to steal it and continue using it. The term is rental difficulty. Right. Which is yes. Uh, this is not one of those games. They made it easier in Japan. Really? No, that's. Yes, they did. They made this game easier for the Japanese audience. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Because in Japan, yes. you couldn't rent games. You had to buy them. Uh, oh, sure. Okay, then that makes sense. Yeah. Whereas in the U.S., you could rent games, so they had to make games artificially harder this in the, the U.S. This is part of the level. You can do it. Yeah, I got it. Are you? Anybody who's ever played this game, everybody talks about this when they review the game. Look at this part. Would you say it's the first real challenge? Uh, oh, hold on. Oh, he's uh, focused. <laughs> Ethan, <laughs> recite the Declaration of Independence for us right now. <laughs> Shut up. Kiss my wiener. All right. That, so it's really it only gets harder that, um, here. The Toad has a fart-powered vehicle. Mikey. <laughs> <laughs> Mikey. Actually, All right, so most like, people... You most guys people saw that who... green stream coming out of the back of that bike the entire level, right? No. I love this level. This level's fantastic, but it only gets harder from here. It's got nice parallax scrolling, too. Yeah. That actually um, reminds me uh, of an old quote. My, one of my football coaches in uh, high school would say, he sometimes uh, he'd fart and say, Oh, God, I think I... I he's from Texas. So he's like, sounds like I stepped on a toad. <laughs> why, why, why do you say shit like that? He had all these <laughs> weird little Texisms, like a, if you're like doing something wrong, like, God damn it, you're like a goddamn crowbar in a sandbox. What does that mean, coach? It means you're so out of place. I'm like, oh, okay, why don't you just say that? A crowbar in a sandbox? That reminds me of this, okay, so... Eric used to play, like, Premier or Select Soccer. I can't remember which, but it was, like, uh, uh, above kids getting participation trophies just for showing up, but not, like, fast-track to college soccer or something. I don't know. I know nothing about the soccer. It's still that... exercise. It's good for the kids and developing uh, teamwork skills and everything. Sh sure. I'm not making fun of that. I'm just saying that it was, like, one of those things where... Eric would have to be driven halfway across the state to go to like Spokane for like semifinals or something. It's Spokane. Um, it's, it's just like how you Midwesterners oh, insist fuck. that it's pronounced Oregon because they've, I don't know, they think it's the Oregon Trail, that famous computer game. Regardless. So Eric, Eric would ha periodically oh have to God. go to okay. Spokane for some kind of soccer game and that, that was like all a three hour bikes are uh all those spikes are are instant death by the way there's a lot of instant death in this game i'm just making it look really easy but i yeah. did four practice playthroughs for this game anyway continue um yeah so my so i and i was like even though i was the oldest sibling it was like they insisted on dragging me three hours across the state to go to Spokane for some reason, even though I had nothing to do with anything, and I was old enough that I could stay at home on my own. So, like, I think my dad, Eric, and I went, like, stepped into a restaurant, and they were like, Dad, Dad, my dad let us out, and was like, okay, go in, I'll meet you later. So we go in, and then, like, Why don't uh, you go on in? I'll hire a prostitute and see you later. <laughs> So we, we go on in, and then a few minutes later, my dad walks through the door, uh, shakes his jacket a couple times, and it's like, whew, it's colder than Look a witch's this. titty out there. You never heard that before? No, I hadn't. And if you thought that the Mikey Laughs I Unleash here on the show were vast and and loud, that that was one of the loudest Mikey Laughs of all time when I first uh, heard that Here's the one. next warp zone. <laughs> 
Uh, if you ride all the way down here and jump on up, there it is right there. That'll skip you to level six. But, like I said, this is going to be a 100% playthrough. Mm -hmm. I like how they're just turtle shells with spikes bouncing back and forth. Yeah, if you, if you, there's so much insta-death in this game. There's RNG, like there's some parts you just have to get lucky for. Later when we see the bosses, you just have to get in a really good rhythm. Like if you get in a bad rhythm in this game, you're going to die a lot. You don't have unlimited lives, so there's lots of factors working against you to make this an extremely difficult game. <laughs>